Okay, now let me, <coughs> so I'm just going to show you, uh, not a, really a very coherent story as such, but, uh, uh, but just some, some charts and figures which I think illustrate uh, the kind of difficulties the region is facing. And uh, I hope this thing works. Um, so the growth in Vulcan's question mark, the, maybe there should be more than one question mark here. Um, the first thing I want to say is that the, uh, the region, and, and I'm, I'm focusing here not broadly southeastern Europe, uh, I think we have somebody here from Romania, I'll include Bulgaria and Romania in this, although uh, primarily we're uh, interested today in the, the Western Balkans, but the, uh, the region as a whole has really been uh, hard hit by the crisis in ways that I think are not revealed by just looking at the GDP data. Now, what this chart is showing you, it's data from the Life and Transition Survey, which uh, is, forms really the, the core of our latest transition report. And, and I know some of you are familiar with our annual publication, the transition report. Um, this is our latest one published as usual in November. And uh, much of the analysis of this report is based on, on this big survey, which we uh, have carried out twice across the whole transition region in collaboration with uh, our partners at the World Bank. Um, and it's a very rich source of data. And perhaps if any of you are really research oriented and want good quality uh, household and individual data on the region, please speak to me afterwards and, and we can discuss uh, uh, further. But uh, one of the questions uh, in the, the latest round of the survey, which was carried out in, in late 2010, was uh, how much has the crisis affected your household? With the possible answers being uh, a great deal, a fair amount, just a little, or not at all. So you can see that in southeastern Europe, in all cases, uh, more than half people said that their household had been affected either a great deal or a fair amount. Compared to a transition region average, so across the whole 29 countries where the EBRD is operating of, of around 40%. Um, and with particularly hard hitting effects in, in countries like Serbia um, uh, and uh, Bulgaria. Um, so uh, something that I think the, just looking at the GDP growth rates doesn't quite bring out. People were really harder hit than the official data are, uh, are indicating. And of course, this is on top of a, a region that is, um, is already lagging behind. And this is a chart that I, I, I'm, I quite like, because it really highlights, I think, the, the growth and development challenge facing the region. So what this chart shows you is uh, GDP per capita adjusted for purchasing power parity uh, as a percentage of the EU average. So 100 is the EU average. The bar at the, on the right-hand side is actually the Eurozone, which is a little above uh, uh, 100%, a little above the EU average. And you can see that um, it really brings out, I think, the, uh, how far the region lags behind, especially in countries like Albania, uh, Bosnia, Macedonia, Serbia, which are all below 40% of, of the EU average. So that's why we would, uh, we would expect over the medium and long term catch up to take place, but uh, I don't think we're going to expect, uh, I don't think we're going to see that in the, in the short term. Now, what about our latest forecasts? So every quarter, the EBRD, uh, the EBRD's Office of Chief Economist, where I work, publishes uh, short term forecasts for, again, the whole transition region. And you can see that for 2012, we're really uh, uh, quite pessimistic about southeastern Europe. We expect about 1% growth compared to an average for the whole region of a little more than, than uh, 3%. So this is the region that we expect to be the slowest uh, among all our countries where we're uh, doing business. And looking country by country, uh, the, the good news, I guess, want a little bit of good news is we expect positive growth in, in all cases, but it's really pretty... Uh, uh, small growth. We're talking about between zero and two percent in in all in all cases. And furthermore, uh, this is as of January, but we will pu publish new forecasts uh, around the end of April or early May. And um, speaking from the perspective of today, I think we're much more likely to go to revise the forecasts downward rather than uh, upwards. Uh, in fact, in in a couple of cases, we're we're above the uh, official government forecasts, like in Serbia, for example, they now expect 0.5% growth, whereas we're at 
uh, a little over one percent. And and you know when you're when you're above the official government line on what growth is likely to be, especially in Serbia with an election coming up, then then uh, you're likely to be on the optimistic side of things. So I think. Uh, I think our forecasts are more likely, as I say, to move in a downward direction, uh, or to use sort of economist jargon, the downside risks. Uh, the risks are really weighted on the on the downside rather than the rather than the upside. Now, another uh, chart I'd like to show, uh, and it's uh, something that we've become more interested in, is uh, confidence and. Um, you probably know that in, in all the EU countries and also in some other countries, uh, these confidence indicators are, are gathered regularly um, on a monthly basis in, in, in many cases. The, for EU countries and some candidate countries like Croatia, uh, they're published on a uh, monthly basis. And, and uh, they're quite useful, I think, because they do uh, empirically have quite a good correlation with uh, with real variables like economic growth, and they do help you predict short-term growth rates. So you can see in the charts for the countries we have some data that typically confidence of the last two to three, two to three years has been well below the EU average, which is that, uh, I guess it's light blue or a greenish line uh, going near the, the top. The, the dots going across are Albania, where it's quarterly data rather than, uh, rather than monthly. But you can see for Bulgaria, Croatia, and uh, Romania, Confidence typically has been uh, well below EU average, and of course, confidence in the EU is not exactly uh, very high at the moment. And um, well, with some slight upturn maybe in, in Croatia, perhaps that reflects new government and, and also completion of the uh, uh, accession negotiations and signing of the of the treaty. But I think this is an indicator that really uh, there's an air of gloom in the region at the moment, and, and I, I'm sorry that it's my duty to, to, uh, to say that this is gloom is, is, uh, is shared by us uh, at the EBRD when we look at, uh, at the region. Now, in terms of vulnerabilities, um, I think uh, the banking sector, uh, which was booming in the pre-crisis years, and of course was the source of much of the growth uh, through credit growth in, in, in the years up to 2008, 2009, that this uh, is facing significant vulnerabilities. Now, what this chart is showing you is the uh, share of bank assets um, own in the region, and, and, and here I have a whole range of countries stretching even uh, further east, uh, the share of bank assets owned by parent Eurozone banking uh, groups. And, and uh, the Southeastern Europe countries are clustered over there, mostly on the left-hand side, 70 to 80% even touching 90% owned by Eurozone parent groups. Now, the worry we have at the moment is that uh, uh, because banks in the Eurozone are facing their own difficulties, they're facing um, problems on their balance sheets, they're, place, they're facing uh, more stringent uh, capital adequacy requirements, that they will then, uh, to use the jargon in, in vogue these days, deleverage uh, their assets um, in in uh, in our countries of operations, and particularly in 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 southeastern uh, Europe. Now there is uh, <clears throat> a major initiative underway to try and at, at least manage this process carefully. It's um, given the name Vienna Initiative 2.0 because there was uh, when the crisis first hit, there was a Vienna Initiative, now known as Vienna One which uh, was a, a major coordination exercise to persuade, uh, primarily to persuade uh, uh, parent banks to maintain their exposure to, uh, to their subsidiaries in, in Central Europe and in Southeastern and Europe, and, and in some cases further afield. Now, Vienna 2.0 is work in process, and uh, much will become clearer after a major meeting of all the relevant stakeholders in Brussels next week, but it's really about uh, trying to improve coordination between home and host countries and, and trying to make sure that, uh, that foreign banks remain engaged and that foreign regulators don't take uh, precipitous unilateral actions that can, that can damage these banking sectors. Um, why do we care about the banks? Well, because they are, of course, the main source of credit. And uh, what we're seeing in the latest credit data is uh, a downward trend in uh, most countries, uh, at least compared to the 
beginning of 2011. So a year ago, the credit was picking up a bit and things looked a little more uh, rosy, but now the, uh, <coughs> it appears to be drying up and it's even turned negative on a month-on-month -month seasonally adjusted basis in, in a couple of countries like Romania and, uh, uh, and Serbia. Uh, two more charts, one on exports, uh, which um, again, this is a, a rather uh, tangled up chart. It shows country by country the uh, growth, year on year growth rate of exports. And of course, what you had uh, in the crisis was a big drop in exports. And that contributed, of course, to a, a major recession in most countries. Then you had a significant recovery and actually very high export growth rates in some countries between. Uh, I'd say between about uh, the beginning of 2010 up to uh, the middle of, of 2011. And again, the trend now is very much in a, a downward direction. And, and of course, why, you know, this, why is this? This is not surprising given that the main market for pretty much all of these countries is the Eurozone, which of course has its own problems and, and may be entering uh, a recession uh, as well. Uh, and one last chart, which... Uh, is on remittances. Now, for remittances, we, uh, the data are more patchy and it's, a little, it's more difficult to make confident assertions about uh, the trend. But what I want to uh, just leave you with is to highlight the importance of remittances in these countries. And, and this chart is showing, the, uh, based on official data at least, the uh, remittances as a share of, P of GDP in 2010. So you see how important remittances are in countries like Albania, Bosnia, uh, Montenegro, and Serbia, and, and, and Macedonia to uh, a slightly lesser extent. So uh, almost 10% of GDP in, in a few of those cases are even more in the case of, of Bosnia. Now, uh, how vulnerable are these remittances? Well, remittances tend to be more stable than some other foreign exchange inflows. Uh, like uh, FDI, for example. Uh, but nevertheless, you can expect when um, the source countries are struggling, and uh, I'm thinking here particularly of Albania, which relies on remittances from Greece and, and Italy, and given the problems that those countries are facing, I think we're likely to see a significant uh, downturn um, uh, this year. But uh, at the moment, we, we don't yet have the hard data to, to back that uh, assertion. So that's just some of the, these are some of the indicators we look at, some of the indicators that inform our thinking about growth prospects. And, and they, they really do suggest that it's going to be uh, a year of, at best, minimal growth. We're finding it uh, uh, more difficult to attract private investors to the region. And this is why there's a bigger role now for, I think, uh, official financing, but that has its own problems because there's limited scope for borrowing on the part of these countries. Um, over the medium to long term, uh, well, I think the prospects are, are much better, but they're very much tied in with how things evolve in, in the EU more generally and, and the Eurozone in, in particular. So I will stop there, Mary, and pass the floor to you.